LA is one of my favorite food cities in the whole world. Every single time I go, I'm just blown away by all the amazing restaurants and dishes that I find. From the high end to the low end, cultures from all over the world converge right here in LA and it, well, it makes my heart happy. Here are the top six restaurants that you need to be eating in LA right now. For some of the best and most unique pastas I've ever had, you have to get the Chento in Los Angeles. Their spicy pomodoro begins with a tomato cream sauce that gets sambal, truffle oil, and pasta water. While that comes together, rigatoni is cooked to the perfect al dente and added right into the sauce. It's combined, gets a heaping of parm, plated, and served with ricotta and a pool of this amazing basil oil. I mean, oh, oh my God. Oh, I mean, just that luscious creaminess of that sauce. Nice sweetness. A little tiny bit of heat. I wouldn't say it's spicy, spicy, but you get a little bit of heat right in the back of that bite. I think I love just how well all the flavors are coming together. You're getting that creaminess, you're getting that spiciness. That basil oil they put on right at the end, it has such a nice pop of freshness to a dish that can, could be really, really creamy. Mmm. I cannot stop eating this cut down. And there's even more. You have to get the beet spaghetti that begins with a beet puree that gets poppy seed, salt, and some pasta water. The spaghetti is boiled and then added right into the sauce. It's twirled, plated, and topped with a ricotta cheese, chives, olive oil, and some Alton salt. Ooh. Mm. Really just absolutely unbelievable and so unique. I think while visually it's all beets, the beets really are just sort of like an undertone to the flavors that are going on. It's there, it's there, but it's such a nice balance with that salt, with that little bit of sweetness, to have a tiny bit of more like natural sweetness, maybe a little bitterness in there too. Such a unique and interesting and thoughtful bite. Mm. I've been dying for true Tokyo style pizza since getting back from Japan and Pizza USA is the closest that I've found. So what's Tokyo style? Well, it's Neapolitan style, but what makes it distinct is both the level of salt and the olive oil, which should be overflowing out of the pizza. Cooked in a 900 degree wood-fired oven, it comes out just bubbling. I think the key thing we're looking for to make it distinctive is that olive oil, and is an amount of salt. And this is like losing olive oil, and then that extra bite of salt, and then just like, the most perfect, perfect dough, and so salty. Like even the crust is so salty, I fucking love it. All right, so if you're looking for the best pasta in Venice, you have to get to Aspi. Aspi begins this house-made pasta dish with a spicy pork suco, which is pork cooked down with tomatoes, taking over a day. Added to that is Calabrian chili puree, red pepper flakes, and a little bit of pasta water. As that cooks, the house-made raschiatelli pasta is quickly boiled before being added right into the sauce. After that comes together, a little fresh grated parm is mixed in, and then it's plated with a spoonful of the crema de pecorino being added right on top. Finally, a little bit of breadcrumbs to finish. First of all, you get the heat. You see the heat, you get the heat, so good, but those toasted breadcrumbs on top, Ooh, that nice little crunch with all that savoriness going on too. Mmm. Hugo. And then they have their spicy rigatoni uh, with the vodka sauce and just like a ton of Calabrian chili too. The spicy rigatoni. Perfect, perfect, perfect chew in the pasta. Beautiful, nice, luscious, creaminess, and a little tiny bit of heat at the end. It's really fantastic. It's a nice little sweetness that went through the whole bite, you know? 
bonus, uh, make sure you order their crispy provolone. I mean, yeah. So Aspie takes provolone, they bread it, they deep fry it, just absolutely perfect golden brown. Uh, it's served with a little bit of vodka sauce inside and covered in parm. This is seriously one of the cheesiest bites I've ever had of all time. It's so, so crunchy and so cheesy. Mm. Mm. It's like the perfect fry. And their copa salami sandwich with spicy eggplant, zucchini, and provolone all on their homemade bread. I mean, on that sandwich, the homemade bread makes all the difference. And then that spicy eggplant and zucchini, that just takes the whole thing to an absolute next level. Like, oh my God, I just eat like this. Mmm, and the sauce too, just like really nice heat going on. Mmm. There's a reason Courage Bagels has a line from the second they open up every day. The bagels are crunchy yet super light, but it's the toppings that truly shine here. The tomatoes, the tobiko, the lox, all just perfection. So I got the burnt everything here. It's a rip and dip situation, so let's just rip it. Mm. Dip it in a little butter. Really super, super, super crusty on the outside. Nice tear, really light on the inside. I would say it's missing a little bit of the sweetness maybe that I would expect from a Montreal bagel, but an excellent bagel. But if we're gonna compare bagels, I think you gotta try it with lox. Lox are great, absolutely melts your mouth. I think it works really, really nicely with that bagel itself. Because the bagel's so super, super, super crusty on the outside, it is a nice texture difference to build up the whole sandwich. Excellent sandwich. Would I say it's New York City level? Aw. Would I say it's absolutely fantastic? Sure. LA style, now it's placed in my heart. Fried chicken sandwiches are all over LA, but one of the best and most unique ones I've found are at Daybird, which might seem discreet, but their sandwich definitely isn't. Whoa. It's made with this enormous Taiwanese Szechuan fusion style fried chicken thigh, uh, which I got medium level in this potato bun with cabbage, slaw, and pickles. Crazy, insane crunch. It's actually really nice sweetness at the top of the bite. And then since I got the miles, the heat builds, builds, builds a little bit, where mouth is warm, not overwhelming, really nice heat. Love the chicken, super tender. But you don't even need the rest of the sandwich. Like, it's good with that slaw, nice crunch, nice soft potato bun, but I'm a fan. Mmm, it's so good. I've been on a smash burger kick, and for the win, did not disappoint. What started as a pandemic pop-up, For the Win is now ruling the heavily crowded LA smash burger scene. It starts with the grass-fed beef patty being seasoned, top of grilled onions, and just smashed on a sizzling griddle. A slice of American cheese, and you can get a single, but I recommend the double. It's drizzled with their taking a thousand island dressing, pickles being added right on top, and there it is. Every single part of that bite just oozes and melts and coats my mouth oh so, 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 so nicely. The meat is just exceptional. Love those griddled onions in there. Plays really, really nicely with the savory and a little bit of sweetness you get out of there, but that sauce, that saucy book, good. Try it fast. Skinny, classic, fast food french fry here. This had used the same sauce. Use that sauce that I love. Mmm. Nice level of crisp, great saltiness. But yeah, that, that sauce adds like a little. Mmm. 